In this video I'm going to show you how to fold a vixen, a female fox, designed by Roman Diaz. Diagrams are in his book Origami Essence, which is available on origami-shop.com. It's a really excellent book, not just because its outlay is beautiful, but also there are just wonderful, wonderful um, models in here. For example, the ring-tailed Lemur is one of my favorites from this book, but also many other superb models, all animal models. And you can really tell that Roman Diaz is a veterinarian because he just um, has all the proportions right and, and the, the animals just have such expressiveness. So I'm, I'm absolutely in love with this book. I'd actually say it's the best book I own. Um, and in the front you just have an overview of all the models that are in the book, which is excellent. The diagrams uh, have ratings, they have recommendations on what paper to use, they're um, very precise, have a lot of references, and um, yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. So I really recommend this book and I'm going to show you um, the Vixen, which has a rating of complexity 3 out of 5 and a recommendation of just using plain kami, white on one side obviously, and the other side should be something like a yellow-brownish color, I guess, because that's the, the, the natural color of uh, a fox. I'm, I'm going to use a sheet of paper that has a side length of 24 centimeters. So it's a square, 24 by 24 centimeters. And the, the model is going to have this size, which is about 10 centimeters height, about 13 centimeters width, and about two and a half centimeters depth. So it's, it's not um, hugely 3D, um, but it easily stands and it's, it's very beautiful. In inches, um, this means that you should start with a sheet of paper with approximately nine and a half inches to get a model that is about four inches tall and about five inches wide and about one inch deep. And I recommend you don't use smaller paper than this for your first try. So let's start. We're going to start with the white side up and crease the diagonal. Unfold, rotate, and also crease the other diagonal. Do work precisely as always. Um, it's, it's just really key to do that so that the following steps will be easier to perform and the finished model will be just that much prettier. Now take the edges and bring them to the diagonal creases you created. First two on one side. This is the first one. And then the other side. Then rotate and repeat those steps on the other half of the square. Now we want to create a crease that goes through this intersection. So we're going to bring up the paper, then pinch at that intersection, and then align this corner so that it lies exactly on the diagonal. You can also take these two creases as references. They will be aligned with the two creases in the bottom. Rotate and repeat. Now we want to add a crease between this point and that point. So it will go exactly along of these three, the shortest, 
and then here the central one. I'm going to rotate the paper a bit. It's going to be a horizontal crease. And crease throughout. Unfold and then repeat on the other side. This time you again have a reference here and there and then the crease will run right through here and notice that the intersection will lie right on the diagonal a bit above the, um, above the center and not here. You don't want to add a crease so it runs along this, uh, this cluster of creases, but you want it to be on one of the three sides. Unfold, and now we want to add more creases that run through these intersections here. They're again horizontal, and you only need to crease up until here. So you can take about an alignment here, and then either just crease through there, or you have some reference points. You have a crease here that will lie right on the diagonal. You have a crease here that will go to this intersection. You have a corner that will go over there. There's a lot of references you can use, but just try to use any you like. Crease up until the diagonal. You don't need to go any further. And then repeat on the other side. Unfold and then rotate the paper so that you have these creases pointing upward and then take this lower corner, align it with that intersection we just created, so not the bottom but the top and crease. Unfold and flip over the paper. Now we're going to add some horizontal creases again. You can see we've got this long crease going throughout the length. And we're going to take the lower edge and bring it to that crease. If it's easier for you, you can also fold this back and then fold to the edge. Then rotate and bring that edge to the edge you just created. Unfold completely and then repeat on the other side. Again unfold and now collapse on the existing creases. We've got two which we created here and two which we created here. And the outer ones are mountains, the inner ones a valley. And then push up along another mountain fold and collapse. Then rotate the model and you'll see that there is a crease running along here going to take this closed edge and align it with that crease line and crease through both layers. Unfold and then we have this section here and you can see that there is a diagonal crease that ends here. We're going to add a horizontal crease that starts in exactly that point. So Bring it up, pinch where that diagonal crease ends and then align edge with edge 
and make a strong crease through several layers of paper. Then rotate a bit and bring this lower edge to align with that edge, creating a crease that starts in this lower left point. And again crease through several layers. Use your thumbnail to make a strong crease. Then open up and take this lower edge and align it with the crease you just created. You will swing forward the paper and just let that back release, which is going to be the tail. You might recognize that already. Align and again crease through several layers. Make a very strong crease, which will make life easier later. Now you will see that this is not symmetrical and you can, you can see there's two layers, one here and one there, and then one in the middle. And just take one layer and release it and bring it to the front and then reverse the folds. So you're going along this crease in a valley now and that crease in a mountain. So then the model will look the same on both sides. Let's zoom in on this part. Next we're going to take this edge and bring it to that edge. Just going to rotate a bit to fold away from myself because I think that's quite a bit easier. Make a strong crease, then open up the paper to make an inside reverse fold, pushing the paper inside, going along the existing creases. And then fold the paper down as far as it will go. This point here, right here, will then lie against that crease line. And make a crease. Flip over the model and do the same thing again. Pre-crease. Inside reverse fold. Going along existing creases. And fold the paper down as far as it will go. Make strong creases and unfold everything again. This is just some pre-creasing for later. Let's do another quick mark for much later. We're going to take this point and bring it to that intersection. So you can see there's a crease line here. There's a first intersection and then a second intersection. We're going to bring that point to the second intersection and then make a small pinch on the closed side. So this is the open side. And we're making a small pinch on the closed side. Next, we're going to take this edge and align it with that crease line, this um, vertical crease. So we're going to open up the paper a bit so that it's easier to fold. This is the crease line I'm talking about. I'm going to take that edge, align it with the crease line, and crease all the way through. And unfold. Next we're going to add a crease that starts here in the bottom. You can see several crease lines here and there's one which is basically the last of several of those which is a vertical crease and it um, hits this edge and right there we're going to start the crease and go to this intersection. So what I do is actually use some other references. You're going to take this edge and maybe try to start a crease in that point already. And then you've got a pinch mark which we just created and you can align it with that point right here. 
And then we're just going to crease from inside up to this point right here. You can see you've got one, two, three creases here and you crease up until you hit that first one. And then unfold. With that pre-creasing done, we can close this up again. And now we can collapse along the creases we just created. We're going to fold in along this one. The next one we're going to fold out again and then fold in again. So this is going to be mountain, valley, mountain from both sides. So you can do an inside reverse fold in the top. To prepare that. And you want to again go in on the first one. And then you want to have valleys on the second one. So if you've got the mountains in place, you can just push this inside and when it will naturally go along the creases, it should. Careful not to damage the tip. That's going to be the nose. Now you see that there are creases right here. There is this vertical crease here and we're going to fold along that because it's not creased on all layers yet. And then I want you to really take your thumbnail and crease very firmly because that's going to make a later step much easier. Then unfold again, unfold this again. And let's work on the tail next. We prepared some creases here and we're going to go along them. I'm going to focus on this area now. Now we're going to collapse on these two creases, two existing creases. This is going to be a mountain fold and this is going to be a valley fold. And you need to do this on both sides at the same time. But let's just look at one side to ensure you know what's happening. This is a mountain. This is a valley and you're collapsing like this. Both sides collapse. It's on existing creases, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Now comes a slightly more sophisticated step. You've got a crease right here and in the inside you've got a crease right here. And we're going to sink this area down and this area is going to come forward. For this we need to open the model a bit. So let's unfold this a bit and open up. And you can see this area. These are the mountain folds we just did. So let's incorporate them again. And now <clears throat> these are going to be mountain folds and these are going to be valley fold. So we can push the paper down to get mountain folds here and push the paper a bit forward and inside to get valley folds there. So this will come forward in a mountain fold. And down here you have a valley fold in the center. And then you can close up the model again, like this. On the other side you need to perform the same step. Open up the model. First get those long mountain folds in place and then the valley folds from the top, the mountain folds from the bottom and close up the model again. 
first time I think I was a bit more detailed, but this is just a repeat. Now we'll open the tail area and you will see something that looks a bit like a bird base. And you have the side which is closer to the outside and the side which is closer to the inside. Now we want to take the inside area and perform a closed sink on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our finger right in between here and hold the model open. Open it a bit. It's hard to do this without really obstructing the view with that tail. And push on this point to get that paper to go inside. And it will appear right there. You can see This is the area that we've pushed inside and now you can straighten out the fold so that it's a neat fold and then close it up and you can see that area has vanished inside. Then this area you've just released you can just fold back. And repeat on the other side. Again, open up and then sink the area that is to the center, not the one on the outside. Push in, then straighten out the paper. and then fold back. Now open that area up again and you see that here you've now got a pocket and we're going to hide this other half of this bird base shape inside that pocket. Trying not to hide this too much. The tail, you know, it gets a bit in the way of the camera. Sorry for that. Again, on the other side, you have that bird base. You have the pocket. And you push it inside the pocket and then you close up the tail. Now let's do the color change on the tail. Take this tip, fold it up a bit. It's a bit too taste really, not too much. And then you can see there's these strong mountain folds here. Fold up so that uh, you don't quite touch those mountain folds. There's still a slight gap, just as an, an approximate uh, reference and then close up again and you can see you have that color change on the tail. Let's finish off the shaping of the tail by just um, folding in this point, starting a crease in that top point to soften that curve a bit. Again, this is really just um, a fold that's up to your taste. There's uh, no other folds connected to it. Just make a crease that you think give a nice shape. And once you've got one side, you probably want the other side to look symmetrical. So align it. And make a crease. And then the tail is all done. Let's work on the body next. We're going to use these existing creases as a reference to open up the model. 
we're going to have a long valley fold which goes from here up inside up until that point and a mountain fold along here. So let's first open this up and make a long valley fold by just pushing on this point, pushing it in and almost automatically this mountain fold um, will be incorporated too. And then you just fold up to bring this point right here to lie over there. So you have an edge here, you can just bring that over so it lies there. Over here there's another existing crease and then you add a crease here. And then let's repeat that on the other side first. Again, open, by pushing on the crease and then fold down and create a crease right here. Next we're going to take this top left corner and fold it down to the bottom right corner. Same thing on the other side. And then we want to make an outside reverse fold. So we're going to open this whole area up and we're going to go along this crease that runs right along here. So open the model up and then push the paper inside out. I'm pushing just from the back and we want to hit that point and then we can close the model up again. Be sure to just go along existing creases and not create any new creases. Flatten the model, make the crease nice and strong and then and bring it to the front. So um, take maybe this top closed edge and pull it out and then start flattening again like this. Same thing on the other side. Pull out and flatten again. Now we're going to open up the model and collapse along some existing creases. These in the top were created um, at the part where I said crease very very strongly through all layers. And down here you have some creases too. Ye these you want to have as valleys and this one in the center a mountain fold. So just push this to the front. Get that somewhat into place to the right shape and then in the top here you will have a zigzag of mountain folds so let's make those just by pushing this in and on that side too just by Pushing this in, you can see I'm going along this existing crease, making it a mountain fold. And straighten this out a bit. And then you can start collapsing this. You've got existing creases here, and they all can be collapsed so that you'll have a mountain, a valley here, a mountain there, a valley here, a mountain here a valley here, push that inside, mountain here again and just need to straighten out this crease right here so that we get it all nice and tidy so you can see this collapses all the way and here as I said you want 
a valley fold throughout. Push this to a mountain fold and then you can close up the model like this. And then just sort this out as before and this is the result. Now we're going to take this edge and align it with this edge and that crease line. And you're going partly along existing creases, so it shouldn't be hard to get this quite accurate. Now you have some layers here, several layers. You're going to fold those up also. And you need to make very strong creases here, as before. They're going to be very important. There's le several layers, so advise you maybe take something to make a strong crease. Turn it around, again fold in as before. And then take that section and also fold it to the other side and again make a strong crease so that it goes through all layers. Then unfold again. And now you want to open this area again. And you see that you added these creases right here. And we're going to fold the paper to the front along those creases. So I'm pressing on this intersection and that intersection and this intersection to make the paper flip forward and here just making the paper go into the other direction. And then you can start closing up the model again. Just as before, push in to flatten this out and be sure to go along existing creases, not adding any new creases. And flatten out. Then just ensure that the model looks as before. So for me, I actually have to make this go back here. And same thing on the other side, just pushing this opening here and pushing this open again. Then take this top edge and align it with this edge. The paper won't be um, able to be folded any farther because of this connection right here. Now we again want to bring one layer forward, so take just one layer here, pull it forward so it's released, like this, and then fold this section inside. So I'm opening this and pushing it inside along the existing crease. Same thing on the other side. Take just one layer, pull it out, and then fold that paper inside along the existing crease. Then we're going to take this point right here and fold it inside so it basically lands on that point. So you need to open this up a bit and fold inside so that it meets this point. Again, this is as far as you can actually fold the paper because else you can't close up the model anymore. We've got the front leg already formed. Let's work on creating the hind legs. For this, we're first going to take this edge and align it 
with an existing crease that runs right along here. This is going to be a slightly 3D step because uh, you're just opening one layer of paper and it's connected in the back. So a line crease as far as it will go, letting this uh, turn 3D and then take this um, this point right here and ensure that it lies on the bottom edge. So you're flattening down like this and make a new crease in the top. Now this crease you just created we're going to align with this edge. Opening this up again aligning it so that it's an extension of this edge. The crease runs right along there. And then you again take this point and you flatten this down like this. And then you can see the start of a hind leg. Let's repeat this on the other side. First take just one layer, align it with an existing crease line, crease all the way in, then flatten again, take the edge you just created and align it with this edge and then flatten down the model again creating another new crease right along here. Next we want to hide this section a bit by bringing this section to the back and that paper to the front. Now what I do is I open this up a bit making it 3D. You can see quite 3D and I press this point down to the bottom. It's kind of like a closed sink. So I take these layers, put like my finger down in here and press this together so it doesn't open up and then press on that point to bring it to the back. And you will see that you have a vertical crease right here and you can bring that to the front and then you can close the model up again. Let's look at this again on the other side. You have a valley fold right here which um, the model is folded against right now. And this is going to turn into a mountain fold to hide this area underneath that paper. So open up the paper, then press that point down to get it to the bottom and let that previous valley fold turn into a mountain fold. Straighten out the paper and flatten. You will see that a slight tip still emerges. Now this is just a very small tip so we're going to make the hind leg a bit more visible again by taking this corner here and folding it inside. You'll see that you have a crease right here, a valley fold, and you're going to fold this lower edge so it aligns with that crease. Bit hard to show. Here is the crease line. I'm taking that small edge and folding it in. I actually just drip the paper a bit. It's always hard to show this to the camera if it's a bit of a hidden fold. 
but there you go, it sometimes happens. Same on the other side, just taking this and folding it inside. This time I'm not going to rip the paper, but I think you know what's happening. So then the hind leg is more visible and you've got this nice shape. This is kind of like um, the front area and this is the back of the hind leg. Now that the hind legs are done, we're going to concentrate on forming the head. Remember in the beginning we did a small pinch mark just as a reference. We're going to use this reference now. We're going to start a crease in this bottom point, which goes all the way up to that reference point. And we're going to make a squash fold. So what we're going to do is get the center and then make a crease between those two reference folds. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just as an orientation. And then you can see a head emerging. So if you've got this crease added here, you now want to ensure that you have a symmetrical head. So I turn over the paper and you can see here is a diagonal crease and you want it to align exactly with this point right here. Align it and then you can press the head flat and it will be nice and symmetrical. Then we can just fold back the tip of the nose and fold in not too little. It's going to be a small color change on the tip of the nose. And then we're going to form the head. We have some existing creases here. We're going to just fold in along there. And this again is 3D because there's several layers here. And we want to squash fold here, so we're going to cre um, press on this crease here. And as a reference, I guess you can see that when you press this flat, there's a white triangle that will be created here. And the, the lower left point of that triangle should lie close to this edge, but not touch it. So if you have just a tiny bit of space in between, and then crease down. And do the same thing on the other side, trying to get it symmetrical. This time you can also take as an orientation that these points here match up. Because that's probably the reference you, you really want to have looking clean. And press flat. Now we want to not have this color change here. So let's uh, change this and make some strong creases here, please. Color changes aren't too hard as long as you're um, not too shy about opening up the model again. So I'm going to open this up again. You can see these are the creases I created. Just going along them in the other direction. Closing up the model again, and then there is your color change. That wasn't too hard, was it? So again, don't be too shy. Open up the model. Go along that crease, making it into a mountain fold, and then just let it pop back into place. Like this. Next we're going to zoom in just to form the eyes. You will see that there are creases right here and right there and we're going to use those as a reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge here and align it with that edge 
and thus we have to make a small squash fold here. This is very small. I hope my hands are not going to be in the way too much. So you take this edge, align it with the crease line I indicated, and then you need to squash fold. And as a reference, you can take the crease you have and align it with that edge you're creating in that step. And you might have to go in there and straighten out the paper a bit to get it nice and neat. and then press flat. So you can see this edge right here lies along that edge and this crease line is an extension of that edge we just created. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then your fox has some eyes. Now let's shape the head a bit first let's let that nose pop up so we're going to just make a small valley fold here and let the layer behind release i did quite a big tip this time i think other times i've done smaller ones but it's up to taste and then to shape the head, we're going to add some mountain folds from this point along this edge of the eyes to the outside and then to the tip. Same thing on the other side, mountain fold here and then to the tip. And you can crease through all layers if you like. I think that's the easiest way of doing it mountain fold up until you reach this area and then mountain fold to the tip like that you can make quite strong creases and then make them less strong later on and to the tip Then you can also add some valley folds between this point down here and somewhere up there, either here or in the back. Doesn't really matter that much. It's just some shaping. And then you can also squeeze this together to strengthen a mountain fold there. I actually like adding a small rounded crease here. So what I do is I just go in here a bit and just with my fingernail add a small curve see that it's just a slight small curve and I extend it to the bottom it's quite hard to get these symmetrical and it might need some practice to to get them there in the first place but I like that as a slight personal touch back into place and next what we're going to do next is um, this area is really not attractive right so to form the belly we're going to take this lower point and fold it in as far as it goes and that's basically if you follow this crease line here up to the back right there but 
essentially you're starting a crease in this point and folding it up as far as it will go and we'll do a slight squash fold to actually enable that. So let's open this model and let's open this model here and fold inside and you can see here there's some extra paper and it's going to turn slightly 3D. Folding this up to the point I indicated right there and it's hard to show this again. It's always these hidden folds. Um, but you have to remember this is actually inside the model, so don't worry about it too much. And here you need to do a small squash fold to enable that folding in of the paper and then flatten it and repeat on the other side trying to get this symmetrical but if you use the reference point that's not too hard you can really fold it in as far as you like but reference points help I think and then you can see this is much nicer already I think I missed one of the steps really I'm just noticing now because back here um, this area we need to sink so we're going to do that now I think we should have done it a bit before uh, but I think we can manage I think we can manage so what we're going to do is we're going to take this edge and fold it to that edge right there. You can make this step a bit earlier in the model, obviously. It's di in the diagrams it's done quite a bit earlier. And I just forgot about it, but you know, that happens and some of the steps you can do in a different order. Make strong creases here. And the third one and we want to just get rid of that paper because it's not very attractive and like this it's still quite visible so we're going to sink it so if you have strong creases here you're going to i'm going to have to open up this face i'm sorry okay we can refold it after and undo that color change undo that color change. Let's go back to this. This is about where we should do the sink. And now we're going to open up this paper and go along the creases we made. You can see them here, going along here, going along here and to the back. And I'm going to do them all three at once, because I think that's easiest. So I think I have to zoom out a bit. So we have these three areas which we're going to sink. So I'm going to open this to basically make mountain folds out of all of those creases we just added in. That's number one. That's number two. And that's number three. And then we can just sync them, closing up the model again. One, two, three. Be sure to get this back into place like this. So now that neck has a nicer shape. And then we need to redo all of these folds. Just a quick walk through through the steps before. This one I actually have to redo the color change. And fold these back in. Reform the eyes, fold the tip back up, make the creases strong again. Like this. 
this. And now there is really not much left to do. We're going to add a crease between this point and that point, just valley folding the whole area to the front. It will basically naturally go along there. Press strongly because there are a lot of layers here. And then fold the neck back again along right along here. So you're basically folding back this head. Uh, this looks like it's in a strange place, but if you release this a bit again, you can see it's just that the head is looking forward a bit. And let's refold that eye. Now we need to form the front leg. Um, on one side we're going to make a rabbit ear with a mountain fold here, one that starts from this point, goes down to that point, and the third one along here. So you can add those creases. Here is that one. It's the second one is already there. And the third one Maybe you have to open up the model a bit. Or just take this tip, fold it up, and it will automatically go along that area. So that's what you get. And then you can do an inside reverse fold to get this back down. I um, make an inside reverse fold that starts way in the inside which is basically this point, and then fold down. It's really up to your taste. Like this, and then I kind of curl this down a bit. And on the other side, you also basically add that mountain, that rabbit ear, and then I don't add that that reverse fold, but just bend the paper a bit to give an asymmetry. Really, that's what you want. You don't really want everything to be symmetric. Then here I actually like rounding this a bit to the inside. Again, this is just to taste, but I, I prefer not having it quite as pointy. And then to make the model a bit more 3D, I'm going to look at the top here and open it up a bit, pushing it down, not really opening it, but pushing it down. And you want to add mountain folds along this um, rhombus shape. So what I do is I fix the model in this point right here, right here, and push the model open, and then add creases in the front. And then I close up the model in this point, right here, and then again push the model down to then add creases on the other half of the rhombus. And this gives you a more 3D feel for the model too. And then your fox is all done. You can maybe open up the tail a bit, just opening it up a bit. Not adding any creases, just open it up. And then your fox, your vixen by Roman Diaz is all done. Um, it's a model that stands, but on camera you can't see much of the model. So um, this is it. 
diagrams, as I mentioned, are in the book Origami Essence. And it's a beautiful book um, with beautiful models. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, do think about buying this book. It's excellent and it's available on origami-shop.com. Happy folding!